Welcome to Acme Electric's Virtual Transformer Seminar. In this session, we will be discussing Buck Boost Transformers. Buck Boost Transformers start out as isolation transformers with outputs from 12 to 48 volts, which get field connected as auto transformers to increase or decrease voltage within a range of 5 to 20 percent. For example, 208 volts to 230 volts. When field connected as auto transformers, the secondary voltage adds to or subtracts from the supply voltage. They do not provide isolation from the supply because they are auto connected during installation. Let's quickly review the difference between an isolated and auto transformer. An isolation transformer is one in which the secondary winding is isolated or insulated from the primary winding. It may or may not contain an electrostatic shield between the windings. An auto transformer is one in which the secondary and primary windings are electrically connected to each other. Buck boost transformers come out of the box as an isolation transformer, but get field connected to become an auto transformer. The major advantages of auto transformers are that they are smaller in size, lighter, and less expensive than comparable isolation units. Here we see the principle that is the basis for understanding the operation of buck boost transformers. When current flowing in a single conductor reaches a point where it can divide and now flow in two separate conductors, how will it divide? It will divide based on the ratio of the resistances of the two wires. If the conductors are the same resistance or size, then the current will divide 50% and 50%. If one conductor is twice as large as the other, then the current will divide 66.6% and 33.3%. If one is three times as large as the other, then the current will divide 75% and 25% and so forth. This condition is what we have when we auto-connect the buck boost transformer by connecting a smaller primary wire to a larger secondary wire. The larger wire will carry the most current. In this example, a transformer rated 1 kVA on the nameplate means that the primary and secondary windings are each rated at 1 kVA. 1 kVA equals 1000 VA. 1000 VA divided by 100 volts equals 10 amps. 1000 VA divided by 10 volts equals 100 amps. Note that in any circuit, the input KVA will be equal to the output KVA. In a boosting configuration, the windings are series connected so that the primary and secondary voltages will be added. When auto-connected, the 100 volt primary and 10 volt secondary add together to deliver 110 volts out. In this configuration, the 1 kVA rating is increased to 11 kVA as a result of the auto-connection. The new kVA equals the output volts multiplied by the rated secondary winding amps divided by 1000. This gives us 110 multiplied by 100 divided by 1000, giving us 11 kVA. Since input and output kVA are the same, the input amps would be 11 kVA divided by 100 volts, giving us 110 amps. You may wonder, how can this transformer with a primary only rated for 10 amps handle this 110 amps of current? It actually doesn't, because where we joined the primary and secondary windings, the 110 amps divides into 100 amps in the secondary and only 10 amps in the primary. In order to select your buck boost transformer, you will need to know the system phase, the system frequency, the line voltage, the load voltage, and the load KVA, amps, or horsepower. You can review information in our catalog about selecting the proper buck boost transformer. You can review the selection charts identifying differences between voltages and also between single and three phase. If load is given in horsepower, you must first use tables 2 or 4 from section 1 of our catalog. For best results, the line voltage should be the actual measured voltage and not the nominal circuit rating. Here we have example 1. 
you would turn to the single phase selection tables and find line and load voltages across the top of the chart. If you do not find the exact voltages, determine which ground to use by finding the difference between the line and load volts. In this example, 189 volts subtracted from 208 volts equals 19 volts. Compare with the secondary voltage of each group for the nearest equal to or greater than value. When viewing the single phase selection tables in the ACME catalog, select the desired line and load voltage combination across the top of the chart. Since the load was stated in KVA, you would read down the column to the desired KVA rating. If the exact value is not found, go to the next higher value. Read to the far left to get the correct catalog number. In our example here, the item number used would be T181051. Go back to the desired voltage column and read down to the bottom to find the correct wiring diagram. Here we see that input is applied to primary winding only and that output is across both primary and secondary. As stated previously, output minus input equals voltage of secondary winding. In our example, we are applying 189 volts to a 240 volt winding or 78.7% of rated voltage. Since transformers are just ratio devices, we will get 78.7% of the secondary rated voltage. In this case, 78.7% of 24 volts equals 18.9 volts. Boosting output will equal input, 189 volts, plus secondary volts, 18.9 volts, for a total of 208 volts. In this example number two, we would take the 208 volts and subtract from the 240 volts to get 32 volts. Again, we would find the single phase selection tables in the ACME catalog and select the desired line and load voltage combination across the top of the chart. Reading down the column until you find a value of 60 amps or greater, you will find 62.5 amps. Reading to the far left, we would find item number T113075. In this example, we are applying 208 volts to a 240 volt winding or 86.6% of rated voltage. Since the secondary of this unit is rated at 32 volts, we will only get 86.6% of 32 volts or approximately 28 volts. Now we will discuss a bucking application. As in the previous example, we have 240 volts minus 208 volts, giving us 32 volts. We would find the desired voltage combination across the top of the chart in the bucking section of the catalog. Reading down the column, we would find a KVA value of 14 KVA or greater. Reading to the far left, we would find item number T113075. This is the same unit that we chose for our example number two. This complete application seen here is only a reverse connection of example two. In this example, we use a three phase application. In our example seen here, we would take 208 volts and subtract from 230 volts, giving us 22 volts. As in our previous examples, we would find the desired voltage combination across the top of the chart in the bucking section of the catalog. Reading down the chart, we would find a KVA value of 80 KVA or greater. In this case, we find 82.99 KVA. Reading to the far left of the chart, we find item number T111687. Looking at the bottom of the voltage column, we find the quantity required and the wiring diagram to use. You will see that the T111687 is only rated at 5 kVA on its nameplate, and yet two of them connected will yield 82.99 kVA. If this application were done using an isolation transformer of standard kVA rating, it would require a rating of 112.5 kVA. Notice here that figure BB uses two single phase units to perform three phase work. 
This type of connection is known as an open delta. Typical applications for buck boost transformers include air conditioners, AC motors, pumps, tanning beds, which is the number one application, and control circuits. In any of these applications, as well as many others, a low voltage condition can cause severe process and equipment problems to occur. Buck boost transformers offer an economical solution to many low voltage problems. Comparing standard isolation transformers to buck boost transformers, we see that standard isolation transformers handle large increases or decreases in voltage and provide electrical isolation and shielding if required, while buck boost transformers handle small increases or decreases in voltage. They do not provide electrical isolation because they get auto connected. Typical isolation voltages are 240 to 120, 480 to 240, 480 to 120, 600 to 240, and 600 to 120. Typical buck boost voltages are 100 to 120, 200 to 220, 208 to 230, 208 to 240, 230 to 277, and 460 to 480. As you see from this chart, under voltage affects motor operation in two ways. A 15% low voltage results in a 17% increase in current flow. A 15% low voltage results in a 38% increase in motor temperature. A 15% low voltage is approximately the same as running a 240 volt motor at 208 volts. Increased current flow can cause extra heating in connecting wires and joints and also cause fuses to blow or circuit breakers to trip. Heat is a byproduct of wattage, which implies that the increased temperatures are a result of consuming more energy. After all, you are paying the utility for kilowatt hours of electricity. This chart shows that torque decreases exponentially in relation to a decrease in voltage. Torque at 90% equals 0.9 squared, giving us 0.81 or 81%. Torque at 80% equals 0.8 squared, giving us 0.64 or 64%. A relatively small drop in voltage can reduce torque to the point where the motor is not able to start under load. These are some of the more common causes of voltage mismatch. We have seen electrical system upgrades where a 208Y120 system has been used to replace a 240 delta. This results in the three-phase voltage being 13% low. Voltage drops are common where cables are run over long distances. Equipment often arrives with 230 or 240 volt motors when the supply voltage is only 208. Utilities will sometimes cut back on voltage for long periods of time to handle demand requirements. We have already seen how a buck boost transformer with a nameplate rating of 1 kVA could be auto connected to develop 11 kVA of capacity. Here we will illustrate the typical size difference between an isolation and an auto transformer for the same application. The buck boost transformer will also have considerably lower losses than the isolation unit, resulting in more efficient operation and lower operating cost. It also has a much lower purchase price. All Acme Buck Boost Transformers have UL3R outdoor enclosures when mounted vertically. They are allowable under the NEC. See questions and answers in Section 8 of our catalog. The selection tables in our catalog offer only the more common voltage combinations. You can contact the factory at 1-800-334-5214 for other voltage requirements. If you have questions about this seminar or any other questions, Call us at 1-800-334-5214, or you can email our tech group at pdpdtechsupport at hubbleacme.com.